Welcome back, Egyptologists. Tools at the ready and fear of curses left behind. We're descending into his tomb to learn about the top 10 unsolved mysteries surrounding King Tut. We're gonna start with the classic, Who's My Mummy? Around the year 1341 BC, a royal child is born by the name of Tutmahaten, the living image of Aten. Sometime after dad's death, Tut rebrands to Tutmahan. This is because his dad is the legendary dumb Akhenaten, who tries to force monotheism. Anyways, some scholars believe that Tut's mom was Ak's principal wife, Nefertiti, but others believe his mother was the secondary wife named Kia. But with either theory, we run into the issue that it's not entirely certain that Ak was even Tut's father, getting cheated on by both wives. That's when you know you're doing something wrong. It's quite possible that Tut's father was the pharaoh Smun Akhara. While DNA tests of several, while DNA tests of several mummies found in the Valley of Kings seem to indicate that Tut's father and mother are buried not far. Egyptologist Marianne Eaton Cross also points out that whereas these mummies are very clearly close relatives of Tut, it's actually difficult to establish precise familiar relationships using only DNA. Egyptian royal families like to preserve the bloodlines, so his mom could also biologically be his sister and cousin, and all of that would show up as an indecipherable mix that does nothing to confirm more than just a relation. If it is Nefertiti, the question remains, where's my mummy? In more recent years, speculation about King Tut Tut's tomb is that Queen Nefertiti, whose tomb and sarcophagus are long lost to us, is buried somewhere within. This claim is made by Egyptologist Nicholas Reeve, who realized that the cartouches depicting Tut had being buried by his pharaonic successor, I, had been painted over cartouches of Tut burying Nefertiti. Reeve said close inspection of I's cartouches revealed clear underlying traces of an earlier name, that of Tut. In its original version, this scene had shown Tut performing the funerary rite over the tomb's original owner, his immediate predecessor, Nefertiti. The new evidence, specifically the north and east walls of the treasury being man-made structure whilst everything else is cut stone, does support the theory that Tut's tomb is only an outer section of a much larger tomb prepared for and still occupied by Nefertiti, whose own independent sequence of funerary chambers lies beyond. It would also add context as to why the king had such a small, oddly shaped burial chamber. But if someone does lay beyond those walls and it's not Nefertiti, then knock knock, Who's there? Few scholars share Reeves' optimism that any new chambers contain Nefertiti's tomb. There's something about her specifically that fills archeologists with dread and defeat like she's the popular hot girl at school who would never look at them. The desire to find her mummy is potent as it would be a tremendous discovery and greatly contribute to the study of ancient Egypt. Frank Rahil of the University of Zurich compiled a list of other royal relatives that he felt could be interred there, including Tut's older sister, Mary Hatton, his possible mother, Kia, and of course, Smen Kahara. There is a belief, however, that if it is Smen, while well, Nefertiti died, Tut had her interred with him. Possibly because, as mentioned, the dude could be his dad, but also maybe Tut knew his mom loved this guy more than Ak. I don't know, I don't got time for ancient Egyptian Kardashian drama right now. All I'm saying is this, Tut could have cracked that tomb open, buried Nefertiti, closed it back up, and when he died, he got buried in the frontmost room. But to appeal to my ancient alien theorists, is it alien matter? On the flip side of Educated Leaps, we have alien conspiracy. Egypt's own antiquities ministry announced a few years ago that there were signs of extraterrestrial activity discovered after some radar scans of King Tut's tomb. The radar scans, according to French archaeologist Avril Sapp, refuted theories that Queen Nefertiti's tomb is hidden beyond that of King Tut, and instead revealed weird and extraterrestrial material appeared to resemble a body. However, both Sapp and unnamed antiquity officials refused to answer questions concerning whether or not it could be alien remains. But the the AO did confidently boast they could not even come up with something like this in the National Treasure or Indiana Jones movies. This is revolutionary. We don't know what there is, but we've never seen results like this before, said Sapp, who coincidentally discovered dinosaur bones in the Pyramid of Giza a few years ago on April 1st, 2014. Whatever's inside of there could hold secrets to everything behind ancient Egyptian history and technology. Egypt will continue to conduct radar testings and scannings to determine how to enter the hidden chamber without damaging anything inside. Next Next on the roster, how do you die? One important question that's likely never going to be answered by anything that might be contained in newly discovered chambers is how Tut died. Let's run through some of the many options, shall we? Was it A, King Tut's knee was broken so badly that it was a compound, the bone piercing the skin and causing massive bleeding. Although a fatal leg fracture fits the idea that Tut had died abruptly, it cannot be stated for medical certainty that the fracture occurred while Tut was alive. It's possible his knee was broken after death. Was 
it B. Tut's death was caused by an infection that resulted from said fracture. Not the result of a chariot crash, by the way, since Tut's physical impairments would have made chariot racing impossible. His immune system was weakened from several bouts of malaria. But maybe it was C. Tut may have been killed by an elderly chief advisor and successor, I. An x ray of his skull revealed calcified blood clot at the base, and it could have been caused by a blow from a blunt instrument. Or maybe it's D. New analysis of CT scans from 03 show Tut was embalmed without his heart and interior chest wall, structures that couldn't have been removed by tomb robbers or anyone else. The assumed cause was an extensive crushing and tearing injury like the bite of a hippopotamus. Despite not knowing how he died, we know after he did, there was a big ol' succession mess. Post Tut, the pharaoh get plot gets all dicey. Hormuz was the chosen heir for the throne and was off waging war against the Hittites. The coup theory for Tut's death revolved around his elderly chief advisor I, because we do not know how or why a high official like him came to be king of Egypt otherwise. He definitively stole the crown and throne from Horeme in his absence though. Ancient letters suggest that either Nefertiti or more likely Tut's widow Akinsenamun was desperate to prevent I from becoming pharaoh and asked the king of the Hittites who they are at literal war with to send a prince who could marry her and rule Egypt. An and Nefertiti are erased from history around that time. During his short reign, King I tried in vain to achieve peace with said Hittites while also simultaneously trying to prevent Horeme, the true regent of Tut, from seizing the throne while he's alive and after he died. To do so, he named an heir, an army commander named Nakahimti, who we know as perhaps to be Ai's own grandson. As you can imagine, Nakahimti became Horeme's great rival, but Ai's successor would finally be Horem when his three year reign ends. Horem would then rule for nearly 30 years and then remove all known history of Tut. And T A A Nefertiti and Tut's father Ah. Now that's a mystery as to why. And while we're on the topic, where is An? For over 3,000 years, her life has been a mystery to us and mostly made up of bizarre facts and strange omissions. Like that, despite being the third daughter of the pharaoh, she was once his wife too before marrying her half brother Tut. <laughs> when Tut died, the corrupt priests chose an heir, General Harambe, known lunatic. Anne was terrified and realized the kingdom was being lost to corruption in secret societies. She potentially writes to the King Hittites during their time of war as mentioned, offering herself and the throne of Egypt to one of his sons. The prince in specific was Zanzanea, and he set out for Egypt and is killed before he arrives. Historians believe this was Hormhem's doing. Anne is forced to marry Ai so he can steadfastly secure his place on the throne, and then like that, she vanishes from history, an absence that some historians say signal her death. But it isn't the only time that has fragmented her story. An's role of ancient Egypt's most contentious period was lost deliberately, excised from the annals of history by the new dynasty that rose to power just decades later. DNA testing she may have been one of the female mummies found in Key V21, but for now she remains shrouded in mystery. The story of the cobra and canary is next. Howard Carter, self-taught archaeologist, plunderer, thief, and is responsible for the discovery and opening of King Tut's tomb. Prior to said opening, he had bought a golden canary hoping its chatter and song would cheer up his empty house. When he first brought it home, one of his housemates tells Carter, it's a bird of gold that will bring luck. This year we will find a tomb full of gold. Well howdy doody, either that bird summoned gold or the maid is a fortune teller. Within a week of purchasing the canary, Carter discovers Tut's tomb. And before knowing whose tomb they had found, the workers nicknamed it the tomb of the golden bird. A bird that becomes an omen of what's to come. During the recent excavations which led to the discovery of the tomb of Tuck Muhammad, Mr. Howard Carter had in his house a canary which daily regaled him with its happy song. On the day, however, on which the entrance to the tomb was laid bare, a cobra entered the house, pounced on the bird, and swallowed it. Now cobras are rare in Egypt and seldom seen in winter, but in ancient times they were regarded as symbol of royalty, and each pharaoh wore the symbol upon his forehead as though to signify his power to strike and sting his enemies. And obviously this segue is us to the classic mystery of the mummy's curse. I'm of the opinion anyone who pillages or destroys history deserves to have a curse, so Howard Carter and company, please continue rolling in your graves, bud, you earned this. So George Herbert funded the excavation and died from blood poisoning days later. Legend has it when the Lord Carnivon died, all the lights in his house and in Cairo, Egypt mysteriously went out. Howard Carter gave a mummified hand wearing a bracelet inscribed saying, cursed he be who moves my body, to his friend Bruce Ingham as a gift, Ingham that 
that man did not like you. His house burned to the ground not long after, and when he tried to rebuild, it was hit by a flood. George J. Gould dies after one visit. Aubrey Herbert dies of gum rot. Hugh Evelyn White takes his own life, but not before writing in blood, I have succumbed to the curse which forces me to disappear. Aaron Ember and his whole family dies, and Richard Bethel is suffocated by, apparently, the Satanist Alistair Crowley of all people. Archibald Douglas Richard died three days after X-raying Tut, and then James Henry Breasted dies on his next Egypt trip. Mystery or what do you think? And last on our list is The Alien Jewel. The amazing story began 77 years after Carter's discovery when an Italian geologist noticed something odd about the yellow-green scarab in the pectoral center. The subsequent tests proved that the lump of glass was older than any Egyptian society, a lot older, in fact. Experts trace the scarab back to the Great Sand Sea, 500 miles miles southwest of Cairo, in which there are known to be huge lumps of glass poking out of the dunes. The general opinion is that a meteor hit the desert hundreds of thousands of years ago, heating the sand enough to create glass. To give you the idea of the magnitude that this supposed impact, the first A-B testing done created a thin frost-like layer of glass in the New Mexico desert. Meanwhile, chunks of glass the size of literal human heads can be picked up from the Great Sand Sea to this day. That means this meteor hit with an impact that we humans can't recreate on a different type of scale. But there's no evidence of a meteor that has ever struck the desert. If this glass is of meteoric origin, then there should be a crater of that age, says Boston University Farouk al -Baz. But no crater, let alone partially fused or a serial piece, has ever been found. This suggests the less exciting origin, a super saturated lake of silica that slowly dried into a natural glass hard enough to resist a scalpel mark. What do you think? Mystery glass from aliens or no? Thank you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed be sure to like and subscribe to see more of our content and for some easy history listen. Until next time.